Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. You're listening to Gas Digital, best of the week. To my current house last August, but we were like staying there a couple nights um, before then, and we were in one of the bedrooms, and the cl- sound asleep, and the closet doors just completely open, and now they're the like the doors that latch like this mm-hmm. and then open, the doors just completely come open, and I was like, all right, that, that that's a little weird, <laughs> that's a little weird, right? So now I'm in my bedroom. And my doors also close like this, and then I latch them. So when I'm camming, I latch it because I don't want, like, the door opening or whatever. The uh, just, This was just two weeks ago. The door unlatches, and both doors, now one's locked, both doors completely open. Now and I'm like, it's the type what? of latch where it's like a thingy like this into, like, it's a hoop. Chain it, or like it was a like, bolt. it goes like this, and then it's got, like, the hook that goes over top of it. Mm-hmm. So it's got, like, the thing So it here. takes, like, effort like to Like a undo. hotel room. Like, I- I yeah, yes exactly yes, so yes. like I've locked it at night and I forgot and I go to use the bathroom and I can't get the door open because I'm like and then it makes a boom mm, yep. you know like mm-hmm. it's a huge sound so the doors just open and the guys on my camera are like uh your doors just opened and not a word and then stuff just car- starts flying off of like our dressers and like the TV ch- goes off and the channel stops and I was like what is going on are then you- my I'm not. I am not. I'm not. I was telling her this last week, and she's like, "Do you want to come to the show?" I was like, "Yes." So like, uh, they. I'm gonna walk the out. What? (laughs) The guys in the room were like, "What was that sound?" Like stuff was falling off of my husband's dresser. Like, is that caught on camera? No, I don't have a camera in my room, but just the sound is. And I wish I had recorded it, but it was. In cr- it was crazy. I was like, this place is haunted. Do you <sighs> get like a, a feeling of some sort when it's around? Like, do you feel threatened at all? Shannon's about to come. <laughs> do you For feel- your <laughs> break. <laughs> do you feel like it's trying to like warn, like what, what feelings do you have? So my overall general feeling is that it's a female and that she's protective of the house. Uh, when we move stuff around, she's definitely more active. So I think she likes, like, some of the house came. Yeah, it's the definitely house- a chick. She's a f- nerd. She's like, oh, you move this over here. I wanted it over there. I don't like the towels folded that way. <laughs> can, uh. we, can we move this? Oh, but you moved it over there. I wanted it over there. How about you f- tell me where you want it moved, and I'll put it right where you want it. Sorry. The first time. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, you- and, but the overall sense I get is that she's sweet. Like, you know, she wants attention. So I'll be like, it's okay. Like, you know, I just kind of talk back to her like a crazy person. But um, I've not felt threatened personally. Um, but that's, I don't know. Like, but I, I also you. like, yeah, sw- like since I've moved in, I've had like night shivers where I can't get warm and it's the only it's only happened since I moved in this house where like I will I'll get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and I'll come back and I can't stop shaking. Maybe you have yeah, Shannon's heart attack sometimes. disease. <laughs> no, I also get that sometimes. What are you sometimes, doing? Though. Move out. <laughs> no, don't no, move out. My house. Why? Why? Yeah. It's not But what are your room? Your roommates are all cool about it. Why they haven't are. you invited a priest? My roommates over? are amazing about it. Have you like, called a priest or an exorcist or something? No, I was crazy? actually I was no, at a You know park. you're going to get you're going to get uh, possessed. Yeah, like that's the next step. For someone who doesn't believe, you have a lot to say about this right he yeah, does because I've, I've, i yeah, I've so i was at a farmer's market things. a couple weeks ago and i saw sage and i was like that might like but help no. her okay oh, hold on shannon's gonna <laughs> remedy this yeah, for i me. don't believe in this stuff but i've seen some weird things yeah. okay so okay. what i was thinking about just now is so there's a medium that's been on the show a couple of times her name is michelle bellinger okay and i follow her on reddit as well good do you for real no, it oh. just sound like a porn star. No, it does. she's not a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she's amazing. And what I first thought was the next time we do a Zoom episode with her, we should have you on and see what she feels yes. from the situation. I would love that. And then uh, going along with that is, have you considered having a medium come to your house? I, I haven't, but I like the idea. Have you considered a large? I would like a medium <laughs> to like read me. Like I'm, I'm totally open to like being read by a medium. Mm-hmm. I think maybe she came with me. You know, it's possible. That could be. It's very possible. Wait, you brought her here? Are, are the mediums <laughs> for real or is it all b- 
Did they just learn how to? <gasps> is there a guy named Jake, Jake <laughs> outside? A guy named J Michael. Okay, hold I on. Yeah, second ghost story. Okay, wait. Oh before, you, before you tell that, yes, I just want to say the Go sage ahead. thing. Yes. So what she said on the show was that um, if you burn sage without already trying to communicate with the spirit or something, that it's kind of like opening up a fire hose on something gotcha. because like they're doing the best that they can to try to communicate where it's not like an exact science i guess on their side and so they just may be trying to communicate with you and then you're blasting this fire hose on Get them the out. yeah and it's I'm like out. and that may like you know be not a great thing uh, necessarily if it's right. not an evil thing like if, if you're not getting the vibe that it's an evil thing then maybe that's not the best route that you yeah, if you're not that's terrified let her hang out i guess yeah right? that's, that's it like i talked to her now that's I'm what she says to do like that's what i just talked to her i'll be like like it's all right. Like you know, like it's all good. So I don't be like she's it. here. Do like, you do it while you're on cam? Soda? I do sometimes. It's chatterbait, but chatterbait. <laughs> close. Um, so one of the yes, pop-ups when I go. And but some guys will be like, "Oh, like are you talking to your ghost?" Like they know at this point that oh, like it's been it, consistent oh, yeah. enough where kind of hot. Like yeah. <laughs> They're going to compete right now in a woke turn triathlon. We have three separate events that they have to compete in that are all relevant to the Legion of Skanks podcast. Mm -hmm. The first <laughs> event is going to be a basketball shoot off. There we go. And it's whoever can make the most, the be best of five shots, right? Okay. Are we getting some, some music while they do it? <laughs> Who wants to go first? Let's go. <laughs> playing that. Best of five shots. All right. <laughs> Somebody assist and grab the rebounds. Jay, Jay crash the boards again. <laughs> oh! Coast to coast, yeah. Coast to coast, dude. Oh, yeah! Oh, By the way, we got way too big of a hoop and way too short of a distance. <laughs> no, this is perfect. Yusuf's got no shot. Oh, okay. All okay. right, two for three. three. No problem. Oh, yeah. Looked like three Mary McCusker out there. <laughs> She's on fire. All right, take it easy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love when outsiders get involved. get <laughs> involved. Three for five. Three for five. Three for five. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot. Here, bring him over here. There we go. Use it. Give it up for Yusef. Channel. Channel the great Muslims of sport. <laughs> oh, oh for one. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! Right, Got to hit all three to he tie. Looks like, he looks like he's part of the Legion of Skanks podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> you did try. Oh! He's still alive. Come on, boy. Come on, you gotta get all three. Yes. Yusuf. Yusuf, this is big, dude. This is huge. Oh! Oh! Ah! <laughs> Yusuf, try. Yusuf, try. Uh, that didn't help your cause. Really? <laughs> what the? What was that? Tower seven, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the, your winner of the first leg of the triathlon. Bye. Bye. There are some things that money cannot buy. There are Mike. some things that you have to qualify for. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> you just sounded like a commercial. There's just some things that money cannot buy, <laughs> like love and personality. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. You just <laughs> sounded commercial when you said that. There's just some things love can't buy, like class. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So it just sounded so commercial. It was so perfect. But I mean, it's true. <laughs> There's just some things that, you know, money can You're such buy. an entrepreneur. There's just some things that money can buy. <laughs> yeah, Yo, so, 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 um, so, yeah. So it's like when you have a lot of money, what, what are things that, things that money can't buy? What do you mean? So, for example, um, I remember that I was trying to get into this apartment. It was mm -hmm. a luxury apartment. Yeah. And at that time, my credit wasn't good. 
Yeah. So I'm like, can I just pay up like two years? You know, and they were like, no. If you don't qualify, for, you know, credit wise, we don't care what you have. Oh, really? And I had millions of dollars. And I was like, are you kidding? Damn. Really? They'd rather have you have good credit than take the cash. Mm -hmm. What? I thought cash was king. If cash is king, credit is God. Well, because I always think about credit as in I'm going to pay later. I don't have to pay it for now. I can worry about that later. Cash is like, here, bang, done. But it's gone forever. See, revolving credit, you can use that money over and over and over. It's like wow. when you pay that credit back, it's like putting money from your right pocket to your left pocket. Because when you pay your credit, that money is, a, uh, your credit available card is available again. to you again. Yeah. When you pay from your bank account, that money's That's gone. That's it. That's it. Shit. So it's That's always, why it's called revolving. It's, be it's better to spend with a credit card, huh? Is it better to spend with a credit card? Absolutely. Absolutely. And people who don't understand money... Sometimes they don't agree. I ask on my live all the time. I'll give you a million dollars cash or I'll give you $10 million loan. What would you take? Most people are like, Good cash, man. Fuck that. You right. You right now. Dude. But you take cash, you're going to pay taxes. You're only going to get about 600000 of that because it's going to be going to taxes. The loan, you don't have to pay any taxes on it. And it's Ever. $10 million and you can leverage that money. You can buy, you know, appreciating assets that are going to make you money. But you buy it and you got to pay it up, though. Yeah, but... If you wouldn't you rather use the ten million to turn it into a hundred million? Wouldn't you rather buy assets that are gonna make you money? Um, there is a deli in um, in Jersey, mm -hmm. just your average run of the mill deli, deli that sells sandwiches. Mm -hmm. That. What's it called? It's not a SPAC. It's a... No, it was a SPAC. It was a SPAC. So it was a, it was the address for a SPAC that had like $200 million in assets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone was like, what the fuck is this? And then there was a Planet Money episode, of like breaking it down. Like, I think the CEO of the company was like the local high school f***ing gym coach. Like it was all this... It was, the, it was a complete front to just funnel money into other companies. And like literally they would say that the, the stock price is... Uh going up because they have new things that they're doing like selling stock. I remember that was one of the reasons why they justified their stock price in a shareholder meeting. Yeah. So now, $100 million New Jersey deli owner, Hometown International, just announced a merger with a bioplastics firm. This is like the subway... <laughs> Dude, this is like a, a, a Netflix movie about the subway yoga mats. Yeah. Bread. <laughs> like, yeah. Doing? God, that's funny. Dude, it's how silly. great is it? That how is that legal? It just doesn't make it any does, sense. It's, fierce, it's so fucking <laughs> funny. It's so ridiculous. To be fair, I think a share of stock in Hometown Deli is basically an NFT. Yeah, oh, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Except they can keep issuing more. That's the actual problem. Uh -huh. They can dilute themselves. But these guys are fucking crushing it, dude. Yeah, I mean, bioplastics? That's the future. Well, the name of the company is Macamer. Let's see what they make. That's the bioplastics company. I think it's mostly zip ties. I think oh, nice. <laughs> They're really getting into BS BDSM. BDSM and <laughs> just home invasions. It just said, so first of all, no ticker symbol comes up, but uh, apparently they revolutionized plastics. If you, you, never, you know it's never good if a company's first thing on Google is their website and no ads. Mm. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, that, either, either they're f***ing... Um, they're Pretty like a solid. shadow corporation or something terrible. They're doing something terrible or it's a f <laughs> scheme. One All right, let's see if we could figure out what this means. Macamer is committed to revolutionize the plastic industry with state-of-the-art bio-optimized technologies to keep thermal plastic out of landfills, landfills and environments by feeding it to fat guineas in Jersey. Oh. Uh, no. Feels like we, a inspi problem, we, no? We, ins we inspired to be the best corporate citizen to promote best practices Social Lies! Oh, they They're lying! Hacked. This sounds Chinese. Yeah, yeah. this sounds We hacked, inspired, <laughs> you conspired to do something, mm -hmm. uh -huh. to steal some money, uh, to be the best corporate citizen to promote best practices, social responsibilities to communities, consumers, employees, and deliver profitability to our shareholders. Uh, our story was founded on the basis to solve the crisis of plastic pollution through sustainability engineering. It does not say anywhere what they sell or do. 
So they're selling themselves on being some sort of. Um, Listen to this. I don't even know what the, the work centers on. The work centers, the replacement, not on the replacement. The work what? centers, the replacement of standard hydrocarbon derived resins with a matrix of benevolent biosource materials. What the f does that mean? I think well, they're Chris, talking about slave labor, man. Like this yeah. is bogged out. They yeah, have, that is biosource materials. Oh my god, benevolent biosource materials. <laughs> And many oh, a matrix full God. of them. A matrix full of dude, them. A matrix <laughs> full of benevolent dude. The matrix was a matrix full of benevolent <laughs> benevolent biosourced materials. That's little, literally what the so matrix good. was, if you recall. This is f Skynet. This is f terrible. <laughs> I've, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole, but I have so many questions about what, how you are in the mind of a straight man. It only not, it, not for everything. Only as far as like relationship tactics go. I can't. I'm not talking about like what you think of like the fact that you life. use the word tactics worries me because I don't think men think about relationships strategically. I know. I said I said tactics just to get you amped up. Okay, yeah. that was a I tactic on my part. No thoughts, only go. You know what I mean? Like, I've never in my well, life been like, I'm going to say this to elicit this response that will gain me this outcome. So that theory right there, uh, honestly, is something that I talk about a lot because women can always overanalyze men and they think, well, this he's going through this because this happened in his yes. childhood and this, yes. whatever. And I go, no, he just doesn't feel like coming. Like, he wants to play video games instead of f or yes, something like yes. it's so much more basic and you're absolutely right because to sit there and watch a bunch of women have uh very overly ana uh, analytical conversations about the thought process of a man and why he didn't call you back and didn't text you it's like so wild it reminds me a lot of that um like instagram real trend where it's like girls think he's out cheating on you and then they're basically like throwing a fucking apple across the table and seeing how many forks can stick it hell yeah like, that's dude. what men are actually doing dudes rock that's awesome that does sound fun yeah um yeah yeah, I, I give advice to my female friends all the time because I think they feel safe talking to me about stuff. And a lot of the time I'm like, he sound, he's just a dumbass. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And then they end up like, you know, being like a little more empathetic instead of like going hard in the argument. And right. then they get to the root of it. And then they're just like, well, I don't like it when you do this. Could you please change? And they're like, oh, my bad. I just wasn't thinking. And then it solves a lot of their problems. It's kind of like... Uh, a lot of women bring me problems with their boyfriends or whatever, and then it's the equivalent of being like, well, did you turn it off and back on again? Yeah. You know? But yeah. I have one of my best friends is a lesbian, and she brings me problems, and then both of us are like, that's f***ed up. <laughs> <laughs> that's f***ing crazy, bro. I can't, I can't f imagine Yo, dog, your navigating a, les fucked. a lesbian relationship. Oh, my God. She just went through, like... I don't want to air her dirty laundry. No one knows who th she is, and she's a very average, a, a normal person who doesn't is in, so far away from this life and doesn't watch this podcast. But she went through like a whole thing where, like, I'm not kidding. For like a month, she would text me, and me and her would like do detective work to try and figure out if she was being cheated on. And people Damn. were like, people were like, it was like Game of Thrones. Wow. And then, and then she was being cheated on. Women are fucking trifling, y'all. Anyway. Trifling hoes. Well, I also feel like a lot can be learned from uh, the breakup, the movie with Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Aniston, because Jennifer will be like, you know, her character will be like, I want you to feel, I want you to come out and dancing with me. And then Vince Vaughn's like, just tell me like what you need. Like, yeah, you just, yeah, yeah. just tell me. I can't guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting on the couch drinking beer, thinking yeah. about my like i don't know what to do i can't tell you how like uh i love dating so like i'm a very like when i date someone i'm just like do you want me to support you or do you want me to solve it right like, i to say that out loud like i I'm like, love clarity as yeah, well yeah yeah and i also love someone who like feels good asking for what they need so someone's just like hey uh can you hold me till i fall asleep and i'm playing a game and i'm like oh yeah I got you. You know, instead and then he has of one arm around there and one arm on the yeah, controller. Yeah, yeah. But instead of like someone who's like, I hope he notices, or like, well, I'm not gonna bother him. But if he does, that would be nice. It's like, no, I will give you exactly what you need if you ask for it. And then, so that's really attractive to me and a partner to yeah. someone just be like, hold me, and then I'm like. And hell yeah, I got you. And then I get to go do my thing and I get to be a good boyfriend and listen. And then the it's woman, like, great. so that, but then like the woman in me is coming in. I'm just like, yeah, but that's like so boring. <laughs> just like asking and receiving. It's just like, oh, no, I could just go to a deli and order a sandwich and get it. Like and instead of having a whole human in my apartment. Yeah. But if you're going to order, wouldn't you rather receive love than a bologna sandwich? Nope.
That, and that's and that, now Sometimes you've gotten to the root of, both. and you've gotten to the root of my uh, of who yeah, I am as yeah, a person. Yeah, yeah. I 100 percent would rather have the sandwich. Corinne, you I have so much love for myself that any extra love makes me a maniac. You realize that if someone loves you, you could just be like, "Hey, I really don't want to get up. Can you get me a sandwich?" No, they don't. Boom! Lo- now you have a sandwich and love. But I then I I would rather just get up and get it myself. Jesus Christ! I really Corinne. would. I what? really would rather just get it myself. Okay. I don't, because then they have to be there while I'm eating the bologna sandwich, and the bologna sandwich is ruined. You're bumming me out. <laughs> You're bumming me out for real. <laughs> You're, you bum me out when you think it's better to eat a bologna sandwich with someone else in there yeah literally Yuck. yes literally Yuck. yes Yuck. When unless you're... it's a woodland creature like a chipmunk or an, uh, a squirrel and i can like give little pieces that would be fun as f- food literally tastes better when you share it with someone you oh love. my god yeah that just went against everything i believe in on a spiritual level there is nothing better than eating in your underwear f- alone and just being disgusting in front of Netflix. No way. What about Eat a I, pizza see, right I, out of the box? I'm the exact mm. opposite where I'm like, there would be nothing better than to feel so comfortable. You can do that, but you share it with someone. I've done it, but that's always at the part of the relationship where things are just like too comfortable. No, you should start at that comfortable. Uh, ew, no. Yep. Sorry. Yuck. You know, I'm white trash. I'm Ugh. a, I decide I don't get to, ch- I'm, I grew up white trash, so <laughs> I don't get to pick who I love. You're making me physically My brain Ill. says you love this person. The first First time I meet them, and it, and it, it either is or it isn't, and then we go from 100% down. Oh my god, you're making me feel so bad. Like probably my favorite JJ thing of all time was he used to meet guys on gay.com. Oh yeah, the gay.com. <laughs> Were you around for those no, days? That's so pretty, funny. That's How old are you? Gay.com. 34? Yeah. So I'm only six years. But that's a lot. In the six years, a lot changed. Because I went from yeah. gay.com to he loves this shit. Dude's gay.com dude. dude's nude.com <laughs> man, oh, yeah. man, oh, I, man. Yeah, I told you dude's, I told you dude's nude. oh here com. watch this manhunt.com uh, oh that's not shit. just dedicated to the childhood gay manhunt I would have gotten screwed <laughs> manhunt.com and dude's nude I found gems there's a guy who was I was telling Ryan who was big who's all Indian dudes named Jim apparently it was a lot of Indian dudes, Indian dudes. <laughs> Who got really mad when you turned them down. Oh, yeah. You, the guy didn't like it. Oh, calling you, you f***ing white racist piece of shit. Like, I like what I like. So you would call, and then you would... Uh, I would, did the phone lines. You would uh, leave, like... Zone. Oh, wait, so they were just outsourcing the gay shit? <laughs> there, I did it all, man. Hello, this is jerk you off. <laughs> Literally. 1-800-SUCK-YOUR- no, Hello, th- this is Caleb. <laughs> we, we were saying that all the OnlyFans <laughs> ratings are like, me and Danny were saying that they're all happening from dudes in India. Like, there's this guy in India just oh, rating like sure, all day for long. Oh, for sure, sure. <laughs> Those chicks aren't doing it. No, yeah, no, that's all outsourced. My my old manager was gay, and he was from a, a little bit before us, and he used to have his office, and then there was an, a... There was no office above him. There was nobody renting the space. And he would leave a message on a hotline that and with just, hey, I'm gonna be in the bathroom hotline, yeah, of this is. building, That's what... this floor at this time. And this is my lunch hour. That must have been hot for that guy if it ever he would out. just sit in there for the hour and he said sometimes it'd be like two different dudes would come. Bro, I used to sleep in a bathhouse. We'll get back. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I used, being gay's wild. Being gay's wild. I used to sleep in a bathhouse because I owed someone money and I had to work two jobs. And uh, um, downtown where the Primrose Hotel is, there's a uh, bathhouse called uh, Spa Access. And I would go there because it was eleven dollars a night. I was working two jobs downtown, and I would go there. There would be doors open. Dude has his face planted in a pillow with his ass perched in the air, just looking to take loads. <laughs> <laughs> they love loads. Hey, hey like did you like re- being a fill in today? <laughs> yeah, it's great. I'm enjoying the hell. Zach Amico's Midnight Spook Show. No matter how it, like, it just keeps going. Sometimes I just wad up a lot of toilet paper, put it up my butt, and go, let me put a pin in this. Right. You don't milk your <laughs> Milk my <laughs> You guys don't know how to get the rest of your <laughs> out of your butt? So I'm about to teach you something Papa so valuable. So Holy All right. Maybe I make a joke like that. So, 
Mike, Mike, mark this point in the episode so I can make sure I rewatch it and learn. <laughs> so you got the crayon. It's not coming out. There's not enough behind it to push the rest out. How do we get it out? Yes. Thank you, Professor. Without, without touching the poop and listen, sometimes you touch it anyway. Ah. Sometimes, you, but you you don't have to if you're if you're good. You go down the crack uh-huh. until you hit the so- there's like a soft part past the bone, but it's before the hole, and you just kind of push push and it massages the shit out, and you'd be surprised how much comes out just by massaging that. You go too far, so, you're touching. This so, is grosser than anything that's happened in the movie so far. Wait, so you go under tailbone? Under tailbone, right? So you before just, you're. So yeah, just follow the crack. And okay. You, and just and there's a soft part between bone and hole that you just kind of push, but you push toward the hole. Uh huh. And it just kind of like either it stimulates the sphincter muscle enough to get that last little like chunk out. Uh huh. Or it pushes it out. Tim is horrified. You, this is valuable information. I I'm fascinated. I'm. I hate this. Going to go home and do this. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're, it works too. If you're constipated, it can help like stimulate the sphincter and do it like that. Mm. I, so Noted. I milk out of my butt on a regular basis. Man. Tim. I'm glad to know. Our relationship this. is over. Is it? No. Because one of us doesn't have waiting in our butthole. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I, it's a good tip because sometimes you still got stuff in there. You get a hot pipe when you're walking around. It's especially useful when you're like in public, taking a public, and you're like, I don't have the time. Yeah, I can't to sit here for 20 out. minutes. I bet I saved lives today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hold up. The thing is, when you have a white friend, they love their pets. So you have to tread lightly because this is like, this is like bringing up politics for like other people. Yeah, yeah, it is. I feel the tension already. <laughs> She's like, "Don't say shit about my cat," and that's the thing—they get offended when you talk about their pets because the cat's a part of me. T- Ten minutes ago, we were shit on Harrington cackling. Now I can't even say the cat looks funny. It's like, <laughs> crazy, dude, it's fucking nuts. It's nuts. The way it's really digging me into a corner here. You know what? <laughs> You know what? You're right. I hate the cat too. <laughs> Listen, I, I Alex found a street cat. I let her in off the street. She would have a completely different life if it weren't for me. Am I developing a savior complex? Am I suddenly wearing Christian things around my neck? Maybe. Ugh. Is she not not only is she a cat, she's a cat from the streets of New York. She's got like when Alex showed me a picture of her, like one of her whiskers was like burned off, and she like. She's like the color she's got of one squinty eye, but she's, she's very cute. She's the exact color of the cats that you see everywhere because nobody picks them up. They're like, <laughs> they're like, they're like the cats that they have extra of in the world. It's like the ones that know. I get like a white, like an all white cat and all black. It's like the one. It's like one of those ones where you ask people what kind of dog they have, and they go a mutt. It's like that. It's like that. That's the version of this beautiful cat. She's a sweet little tabby cat. She's got perfect features. Christine Evans came over here the other day to introduce her puppy to my kitten. And Uh, this is the worst hang in the world, according to Kim. We had a great time introducing the puppy to the kitten. And you know what Christine said about my little Sum Sum? Her name's Summer, by the way. Um, She said she looks like a cat that an Egyptian pharaoh would own. That like she has perfect Egyptian eyes and that she's beautiful. So in your face. Ooh, you got me. <laughs> got me. Wow, I guess you don't respect Christine Evans. Look, looking back, Christine knows a beautiful. Her yeah, puppy, yeah. her puppy, I will give you that. <laughs> the puppy, I'm in. And you know what? When she came to my house, she said, forget the puppy. I want to take your cat home. Let me see the cat. Where is it? Some, some. Ugh, I don't even like the sound of calling a cat. See, you know what the problem with the cat is? They don't come when you call them. Look at that cat disrespecting you in your own pod. No, you know what? The thing is, the cat <laughs> always comes when I call her. She just knows that you have bad energy toward her and she doesn't want to come say hi to you. Oh, she literally okay. is like a dog. She growls when people are at the door. She Ugh. chases her own tail. She's sweet. <laughs> Kate. A, growl- a growling empathetic- empath cat. Gross. <laughs> A TikTok cat. So this is 
another oh, Philly like segment that we do on this show is just called Do They Need a Cut, right? Okay. We found that a lot of people don't know when looking at other people whether or not they need a cut. Like looking at other people culturally. Mm-hmm. You might be able to look at a black person and be like, I need a cut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but can you look at white people and determine whether or not they need a cut? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, thanks. All right, cool. Let's get up to it. Let's get some uh let's get some white people on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got Ashton Kutcher here with a suit and tie on, you know what I mean? Uh what do you think? This guy need a haircut or not? I think he need a cut. I think he need a trim. Less of a cut, more of a yeah, trim. He got he got all that he got all that uh broomstick energy. Yeah, in he got the know. he got the extra in the front. It ain't supposed to be that low. All uh, right, let's go to our white judges, Dylan and Natalie. Does this guy need a haircut? I, I think we agree. Uh, he 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 needs a cut. He there needs you go. a cut. <laughs> I don't hate it though. Okay, okay. Like, I feel right. like he still looks good. So she got one right there. All right, let's get the next one. Oh shit. Okay. No. I think that's his hairstyle. Yeah, because he, yeah. he faded on the side. That's yeah, a white he got, fade. He already clean, so he chose that. That boy got a white fade. Yeah, and that boy, he's probably playing basketball with black dudes. They're not going to let him. <laughs> they probably <laughs> roast him. He probably he probably doing some cool <laughs> black dude just dunked the ball, <laughs> and he trying to let him know, ooh, right. good job, bro. <laughs> he trying to <laughs> that dude. That Cold he switching. hangs out we with black so, dudes. This is also kind of funny because this is my guy in the Miami Heat. <laughs> and with J- Jimmy Butler, just good jobs him all day. They just good job, clown man. him all day. Oh, so they made him get that cut. All right. <laughs> cool. Get a fade and shut all up. All right. Give me another white boy on the screen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah think? he need a cut. That boy need a uh, that boy need a career. So. Yeah, he need to be cut, cleaned up. Was that a farmer? Area. That nigga farms blueberries or something. I mean, but what's the final hairstyle? Even when that's it gets what I'm cut? saying. Because even with that right there, like that, that shit is blowing. That's with Fortune uh, Harris or what's that lady name? What's Fortune Femster. <laughs> she be on TV with this. That's the Fortune final Femster shit. Do be, that look like Fortune Femster with a beard. That's Fortune Femster. Oh, he beard. might not need a haircut. <laughs> I said fortune. I'm like, yeah, no, that, that's her. That's Gotta be. That's Gotta Fortune be. <laughs> I Two. think that's the final two. That's <laughs> the final. <laughs> that's what fortune is going for. All right. Shout out to Fortune Femster. Let me you just double do check with the white ju- judges. Uh, is this he? Does he need a haircut? Or is this the final? I was gonna say the hair is okay. The beard is bad. The, beard is <laughs> the hair is, the hair is okay. okay. Although, hair is okay. I mean, in general, I think you should cut it off. <laughs> That's Hair's crazy. Okay. Hair's okay. It's like, what is it doing? Yeah, I don't know. No, he needs a haircut. That I boy got that. I, I was just know. so focused on the beard that I think it distracted me. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because yeah. that's the other thing too. It's blowing in the wind. So yeah, it's actually it's beautiful. <laughs> but he's inside or outside. It. He's like in a dugout or something. Like, what is happening? All right, good for him. Let's get one more. Next we person, wrap up please. Out of here, man. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> that man forehead. Yo, doing? old white God people are damn. very hard to tell with. Old white people are tough. It's hard. <laughs> That is a toughie I, I right wanna, there. He need the scissors. <laughs> you, you, you can't put... I don't yeah, think Joe Biden get the he trim. Need to, he need a scissor. <laughs> like right around the... Do that. <laughs> clean it up. <laughs> just come in there. Let me clean you up. You, don't even, you know they don't even hit nothing. They're just making you feel good. Those little pieces. You just keep, his, keep hearing it. His eyebrows are like hidden in his face. Hidden in his eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. That's just crazy, bro. It's over. You need yeah. the scissors, but the scissors, absolutely, the yeah. scissors. All right, man, yeah, so he's good. All right, cool. I think the funny thing about white guys, too, they be clean shaven, but still, like, you know, with the little comb over and they good to go. And I just found this out. White dudes do the comb over early. Like his kids? Yeah. Like any preppy white dude you see with that, <laughs> he hiding something. you got a program. Yeah, yeah, we don't suspect it, but it's a lot of white dudes bald this shit up here just... Putting some gel and sideways, <laughs> and then they just come out looking like Peter Parker. Yeah, man, every time. And you don't realize this nigga's 27 years old with male pattern baldness. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. And they weird, too. I was at the hair. Yo, bro, me and my girls at the Botanical Gardens this weekend, and we rode the tram through the car, and the motherfuckers, everybody that was on the train with one of them, I'm like, oh, you can see right through that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all fake. Yeah, man. <laughs> White dudes with them comb over, that's scary. Especially with the big glasses and the comb over, you'd be like, they be probably saying weird shit themselves when they come. I hope she shits on my chest. Oh my god! <laughs> I hope she shits on my chest. They be ball early, man. <laughs> Paris, I hope that hooker doesn't get out of my. <laughs> one more. Okay, let, let me see. Is this one more? It must be worth it. Oh! <laughs> oh! 
<laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This dude is bald. <laughs> like, he's right covering up, up a hole. Huh? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing there, dude. Holy shit. He look like he about to shoot all them. I'm about uh, to say, that's definitely he a school scary. shooter. He oh, um, wasn't. Oh, scary, I didn't even bro. notice that all the black dudes in the background playing basketball. Yeah, I was yeah he's not happy. <laughs> he he, he kind of got the sideburn trimmed up, though, so I feel like he got a cut. He got the, it because yeah. it's clean around the ears. Yeah. This is this is quaff. This is uh, carefully picked to make him look a little bit taller, a mm-hmm. little bit bigger. I'm thinking uh, Mousy a little bit too I like it He's got the He uh, definitely got some product in it He got a ratatouille He look like the it. chef from ratatouille He's, uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> That is wild man So I think it's cut already Yeah Alright double check This is the haircut Nah cut that sh- Oh sh- He needs cut to get it? that cut He needs a cut so it, how it's, to- it's too Bumpy up top Oh sh- he needs We have different top. opinions Oh you I say keep fine. it right. So if he was to get a cut What would he get removed I think he would just look better with more of like not the a whole lower swoopy. cut. Yeah, just a oh. lower cut. I think, but he's I think up. that's why he's got it so big. I'm saying he's got it to cover that sunroof. <laughs> <laughs> he grew it long because there's a moonroof back there. <laughs> you know, one of them Cadillac ones for people in the back seat. <laughs> it's UMMA rap with Chris J. Gomez and Dave. Let me see off size fairly uh-huh. quickly, okay? Um, I was driving in the street. I must have like been blocking traffic. Um, I must have like not stopped completely at the red light. And then at that point, I was blocking traffic. So some guy comes up on the right-hand side of my car, and he goes, it's a f-ing red light, you asshole. And it's not even a dude driving. It was just like a guy walking. So it was just, the whole thing was weird. I'm assuming he had to walk around my car because I was in the crosswalk. I wasn't paying attention. I was listening to... Uh, the Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene. Reasonable. And as I'm parking, I see him walking like up the block. And I was like, oh, well, now I get my fuck you, buddy. <laughs> so I get out of the car. And, and I'm like, oh, hey, buddy. Who's an asshole now? And it's like, yeah, man, you can't fucking run a red light. You almost hit me. I was like, I didn't almost hit you. I was like, uh, that's not true. I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Go fuck yourself. If, he, if he, you almost hit him, he would have come up from the front, not from the side. He fucking, he's not. So he walks away. He walks like 15 feet. And he goes, uh, and he goes, uh, he goes, you f-ing, f-ing it. This, by the way, it's a short, like half Puerto Rican, Italian, half Italian guy. He's like, he's just and like he did, he did the real puss move of walking 15 feet away yes. and then calling you calling a. F-ing. F-ing. Yes. So now you have all the confidence in the world that this guy's scared of you. He's terrified. Doesn't want. He's to half do my size. He should be yeah. afraid of me, right? But at this point, I'm like, I'm like, what'd you say? You're big. I'm like, f-ing it, which is like, I, I live my life like an '80s bully. I was like, what'd you say, bro? Did you call me chicken? And <laughs> later on, you and all your friends got on your motorcycles and ran his bike off the <laughs> yeah. uh, road. <laughs> so he goes, yeah. he, he turns around and very clearly goes, I said you're a f- <laughs> And then that's great right in that moment where you have to go, hey, it's not as much of a f- as he seemed like a few minutes ago. So then I do the thing where I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I start going toward him, right? Now I'm not running, but I'm doing like an aggressive like walk. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you don't want to be, you don't want to be winded by the time you get there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. So he turns around and he's got a box cutter in his hand already. <laughs> so that's why he's calling me a f- He's ready to f- slice my, f- slice and dice me, okay? It's not, it's not like having a gun or even like, say like, um, I don't know, pepper spray or something like that. This is a, you got to get up close and personal to you fight someone to with a box cutter. You have to want to kill somebody. Yes, to fight them with a box cutter. You got to really want to kill him. So he pulls it out. I'm like, oh, you f***ing And I did a front kick toward the box cutter. Did okay. you really? <laughs> <laughs> right? And I tried to kick the box cutter out of his hand. <laughs> what happened? He tried to slash my toe off. <laughs> <laughs> So he starts winging his box cutter toward my foot. <laughs> These are also new shoes. I didn't want to get them cut up, right? So I'm like, yeah, you fucking. I was like, I'll take that from you, mother. I'll shove it up your. I turn it. You remember when Mike Tyson started to tell that reporter that he was gonna like him and eat yes, his children yes. and. Shit? That's the type of shit talking that I, I I turn into a. I'll f- till you love me, mother. <laughs> yes, dude. I turn into a violent homosexual. <laughs> you want to call me a? F- I'll show you a f- baby. Show me your. A- How about you suck my? D- and then I'll suck your. D- and then we'll 69 and both be ch- <laughs> sucking each other's dicks. <laughs> but put the knife down first. So uh, so then he goes, he was like, I'm going to call the cops. And I was like, I'm going to call the cops. You have a f***ing blade. So then it's a race to call the cops. Only he's got a phone. My phone's still in my car. <laughs> so he starts booking like away. Because at this point, I could tell he knows you can't. He's not a thug. 
This is a guy who was box cutting. Like he had a box in his hands. Right. Literally, like, <laughs> this is a, a carpenter or whatever is going on. Right. He is not. A, he's not a thug. Like he got caught up in the moment. He was afraid. He felt threatened. Right. And then he made a stupid decision to pull out a box cutter on a dude. And now I'm seeing on his face. He's like, dude, I'm gonna actually get in trouble. You can't do that. So he starts going like, I'm gonna call the cops now. I he goes into the Blink Fitness, and I'm uh, I'm like the the manager comes out because I'm chasing him in there. And I'm like, I was like, he's got a knife. He's got a knife. He's pulling it on me. Now, everyone in Blank Fitness is like, what? It's like a commotion. They're like, what's going on right now? And then the he, the manager tried to kick him out of Blink, and I wouldn't let the guy leave. So technically, I kidnapped all of Blink. I was like, he's not going anywhere. And I stood in front of the door. I was like, if you come outside, I'm going to take that f- knife from you. No I one's going you. everywhere. No one's going anywhere. And if I don't get $10,000, I'll kill one member of Blink every <laughs> half hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very but, surprised we have a show today after listening to this story. Oh yeah, Vic. No, I, no, I almost fucking this was it was wild. Okay. okay. So so then uh he's calling the cops and I hear him he's like, yeah, this guy attacked me. And I'm like, yeah, he's got a knife, and I'm gonna fuck it. I'm yelling into the phone, I'm like, I'm gonna take it from him. I'm gonna take it from him. And it's just a pure commotion. There's a bunch of people uh, now surrounding us. Did he ditch the knife at some point or no? Still he's in his got pocket, the knife. Dude. So you he know feels, that. He feels justified that mm-hmm. he did this. So You know where you uh, went wrong, by the way? Where? You didn't show him your blue belt. At I no point it. did you flash the blue belt or I do anything. wear it at all times. I did tell the cops that when they came. I was like, look, Did sir. you tell everybody that you had a blue belt? <laughs> I'm a blue belt. I am a blue belt. <laughs> And the cop goes, that's really not very good. So, I mean, <laughs> not that impressive, know, to be honest with you. It's like a year and a half of training. <laughs> um, so then the cops come, and it's like, you know, me, I'm very confident. I'm like, yeah, this guy's fucking pulling out a blade. I'm about to watch this. I, I'm thinking in the next 10 minutes, I'm about to do Real Life Podcast. This is 11.50 a.m. I was like, in 10 minutes, I'll be on air telling this story, right? I was like, this is going to be easy peasy. You pulled out a knife. So they asked me for my ID. I'm like, you don't need my ID. Why do you need my ID? You need his ID. He's the guy with the knife. Like, hey, buddy, it's your word versus his word. I'm going, oh, fuck, dude. I've been here before. Yeah. I've been here before, and I was the one brandishing the knife. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, the cops started, and then I was like, you know what? Guys, I think we should just let bygones be bygones here. Like, now that you realize that you might get arrested. Well, because I, I, I saw the writing was on the wall, and I know all of these cops would rather arrest nobody. Yeah, he ended up going like, all right, here's your ID. And then I left, and then I heard the guy losing his mind that they let me leave. He thought that I was going to get arrested. He really thought this was going to be a fight. Like, he could pull out box cutters on people and just f-ing start slashing at people, which is crazy. I saved that guy a, f-ing, a, a probably a genuine real charge. Yeah, man. But it is, yeah. it is, I mean, even wrestling, even just like with music, with bands, until they find their niche, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Steve was the ringmaster. Did you ever see any of the earlier clips of Steve? Stunning, no, stunning Steve. No, I, I, no, I, I, very, very much like Ric Flair. He's wearing like Flair's. Yeah, right, right, robes. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, like he's, he's very, very much Ric Flair going on. Right. You know, before he became found stone cold, you know, because right. when he first came in, he was the ringmaster. Yeah, yeah. That's he terrible. wasn't the shock master, though. No, he wasn't a shock master, who was quite possibly the greatest character of all time. The <laughs> shock master was great. That was Tugboat. <laughs> but Art Anderson doing the voice, right? One of the, one of the greatest moments in wrestling history. And laughing. <laughs> uh, totally. <laughs> Sid Vicious awesome. said the whole time he's going, I'm telling you, better, you better cut a hole in that, in that thing. He's going to trip right over that two-by-four, man. <laughs> they didn't listen. I told you. I, I told you. I, uh, I knew it was going to happen. Yep. That's a classic moment in wrestling history for everybody. The Shockmaster. You got to check that out. Uh, we got to bring that clip up. One of the greatest moments in wrestling yeah, history, quite possibly. That it really was. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. We should get he's that. Storm he's, he's, got a, he's got a Star Wars mascot. Like, yeah. Are we going to be able to get away with that? <laughs> you know. it totally. Copyright infringement. I mean, there, that's there. That's a property of Star Wars, bro. And then, they spray painted it, put some glitter on it. No one will know the difference. And then they turn him into a construction worker, right? Yes. <laughs> like, what the? What? Yeah. It's terrible, man. Until you, I, like, it's, it's was- funny with wrestling, even bands, until they find their, I hear you. their niche, you right. know? Yeah, totally. Ring, ring, with Rob Flynn. Yeah.
I mean, I have, you know, just a lot of great memories, honestly. But I, uh, one of the one of the biggest that stands out is certainly. I had uh, we were playing in Germany somewhere, and I try. I was going to do a Pete Townsend where you, you know, you whip your hand around a bunch of times, and you know, Pete Townsend has an, uh, a Les Paul with with all rounded edges. <laughs> exactly. And I've you got didn't. An, I've got an explorer with a spiky end that sticks up, and I go to do it, and I go, bam! And I don't know. I must have like pinched a nerve or something. I don't know what happened, but my hand literally froze. Like I, it yeah. was nothing. It, I'm on stage and nothing worked anymore. Like I couldn't hold a pick and I was like, what the five tripped me out. And, uh, and you know, I thought I'd be good, but then by the night, by the end of the night, I was like, I'm, we have a show tomorrow and there's no way I'm going to be able to play guitar. Like I can't even like hold up. I can't even close my hand like to hold a guitar pick. Yeah. And I was like, let's, let's ask Martin. Like you seem like the only dude who we could ask to pull it off out of everybody on the tour and so i was like let's ask martin if uh he'll play the guitar for you know i probably only needed to i needed somebody for like half the songs where there was two guitar parts playing at the same time sure. so yeah. so i remember uh i remember we sat you were, we asked you and you agreed and you were like yeah, yeah sure like no problem and like and i was like i'll come back and i'll show you how to play the songs like on the guitar like in the back of the bus so you and i just sat there drinking an enormous amount of vodka yeah, and real smoking, smart when you're trying to learn. <laughs> we're trying to, trying to learn, <laughs> and you and everybody's smoking a ton of. Weed. I don't smoke weed, but like everyone else is smoking a ton of weed. Yeah, you know, yeah. like getting you high as fuck. We're getting fucking annihilated on the yeah. back of the bus, and like, all right, and then like you spent. I think you spent the night of the bus, and then yeah, we woke I, up the next I, day. I spent the night in the back in your back lounge. It was uh you me and i don't remember the other guys were coming like coming in and out because it was a party going on and we were nice. trying to figure this out and you were trying to figure i remember you were trying to figure out okay so what songs do we really need you for because right. i was like i i think it's better if it's fewer songs because <laughs> it was right. like kind of i almost like what am i getting into here because right. i heard your stuff but I mean, we were out on our first like major tour trying to kick, take care of all our shit and like trying to be like, we were, I don't know, I think we were 20 people on the bus we were riding because we were two bands and two right, groups. Right, right. And, 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 and that was awesome. We got along fine with Mary Beats Jane, but I mean, there was quite a lot of drinking going on and all, all, all other stuff that, so it was like, just coming into your bus was kind of cool because, okay, less people, but, but then it was like, I really... I really need to figure this out. And I was just getting more and more hammered. And I was like, I wonder how this is going to sit tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, this, this, I'm this, thinking this, back, like, what the f were we thinking? All right, let's get hammered. And then I'm going to show you five yeah. songs that are <laughs> yeah, I think it was that sound songs. really easy, but are actually a lot harder to play than they sound. <laughs> yep, definitely. And I was kind of, the day after we, when we were actually trying to pull that off, I was like, this is not going to work. Cause I mean, obviously first we went up, played our five or six songs, went off and everybody else started like drinking and after show routines and whatever. And I was like, damn, I'm going up again. Yeah. And that was a mind fuck. Cause I mean, I was playing, I think we played five songs with Mushuga and I was playing like six or something, five or six yeah. with you. So yeah. it was basically the same amount of songs again. So, and, and, and I went up and I was like, I remember that it was a hard time for me because since I hit, I didn't have you to go off on because you were the only singing. Right. So I was like, am I going to do, who do I go off on? Do right. I, is it Chris? Is it Adam? Is it Logan? Who, 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 who is the steady here? Who can I like work off of? And that was the hardest part to try to figure out like, because it was one thing to like rehearse it. For like first doing it like on the bus overnight and then doing a real rehearsal for sound check right but live is a different beast you know it's yeah. it's a different I thing to just i would have I, I if i would have told you i probably would have said go off of adam <laughs> yeah yeah he's yeah. probably playing closer to what you're playing anyway yeah you know, i think a, that was I, I think that was a suggestion from you yeah. so i'm not sure but i think that's what you told me like okay, logan always kind of did the ambient the stuff chris could be a wild card going crazy <laughs> yeah know, like. yeah yeah he did i mean to be, uh, that i do remember first show uh i don't know if, like i we it, it made it through okay so it worked out and like right, okay right. I, cool did this and then it was like i remember that the word was like oh, it's only for one show 
because it's probably going to be good and we will check this out. But then you, we were doing, and I remember this because our label was coming to Frankfurt. So you played like okay. the Longhorn or whatever it's called in Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Stuttgart. Sorry. Okay. Stuttgart. Yes, yes. And 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 we were playing Stuttgart, and we were like, "Well, we need you to go for one more show." And Chris, for some reason, was so fucking hungover. He was still, he was still super drunk. Oh, okay. But when we were going on stage or going to to sound check, so going on like the the, the second like show i was like because then i know i went over to adams because i was like i can't listen to anything else coming now because rob is doing his thing but chris is definitely trying to find what the other guys are doing <laughs> and he's not gonna go off of me because he was he, he made it through the show and i think it sounded pretty good but like the start of the show i i'm kind of remembering this yeah i'm kind of yeah, remembering he didn't, this he didn't you know i know you you guys as tour manager Steve, right, or something yes, like that. Steve, uh, he was so pissed off because I walked in with a towel around my neck, coming from our dressing room, going over into you guys' dressing room. I was wanting to ask you something about something on the guitar and just starting to warm up. And mm -hmm. he was just, ah, how the f but 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 Chris pulled. I mean, we pulled off the show. Yeah, the show yeah, was I'm, all I'm right. Remembering so. it, I can't. I think he threw up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he came up. He threw up. Yeah, he was so. F up, you threw up. Uh, <laughs> good times, man. And that's like 30, 30 minutes before showtime. It's like, yeah. And I was like, I don't know about this shit, but let's go for it. You know, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, it was, we were fucking, that. we were animals back then. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So a woman reached out, a therapist, um, and said, you know, I. I spoke to your mother and she suggested that I come in to your podcast, Disgusting Hawk. And she has some techniques. I've been talking about how stressful it is to be on the road and how hard it's been, um, you know, that I do a lot of crowd work. I get heckles so that she said that she could come in and help me with that. And uh, and I said, sure. So the producers reached out and she's here today. So everyone, please welcome Connie Stapleton. Hi, Connie. Hi. Hi. I can't believe, I mean, hi. Hi. I am a therapist. Yes. It's great. God, it's good to see you. Can we just take a selfie really fast? I just. Oh, I, I think I that's do that weird. With all of my. All I... of my, all of my patients I do that with, so. Okay. okay, so when did you meet my mother? Oh, <laughs> when you were in uh, at the at the grocery store. No, it was at a it was at a club. I saw you at a club, and she, you know, how she's like always helping you at the shows and stuff, right? What your mom is always around, helping you. How many of my shows have you been to? You know that show you did when you were thirty. Um, a year into starting stand up, you that were was at my, my first show. What? I've been to all of them. I have so much credit card debt. Will you stop traveling so much? Wait, Wait a s you've been, what are you talking about? I am here because I know you so well. I should be your therapist. I've seen all your shows. What do you mean you've seen all my shows? Remember the shows you used You're to host at Gotham? Wait a second. What do you mean you've been to all my shows? There's no goal, the documentary. That girl in the background who's like, oh, yeah. That was me. Do you remember? Um, do you remember Moon Tower? The last two Moon Towers? What, are, what's happening? I was like, oh, Moon Tower, I'm there. Okay, you want to do another heckle test? No, I'm a little freaked out. I mean, like, I'm not even a little. I'm very freaked out right now. How do you know my mother for real? What are you talk? What is going on here? Your mom went to the National Academy of Therapy Associates with me. Okay, your mom was my therapist for a while, but then I went to therapy school, and everything is. Guys, do you hear what's going on in here? Okay, are do you want to? 
Let's just continue with the heckling tests. You're doing great. My mother was. Do you, did you guys know that my mom was her therapist? Did you? What happens check when this? a guy sticks his learned. cock out on do the you, show? Look. Do you see what's going? Hey, Jess, what do you do? No one's ever stuck their c- out. Do you understand? Jess. Do you see what's going on right now? Uh, uh, oh Jess. my God! Do you understand uh, what's happening? That's supposed to be a guy's. C- it, it's a mouse tail. What would you and, do? You never know what's going to happen in the future shows that you do. Like, like I know your schedule. I know no guy's ah! f- looks like that. All right, last one of this round. Who has the bigger f- Jay, what'd you say? I have a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> Not a long f- but a long answer. <laughs> I'm probably not going to get it right if you have a long answer. <laughs> I, said, I said me, but in parentheses, I'm talking square footage with times length. <laughs> oh, that doesn't count. It does count, though. Yeah, it does, because now we got it wrong. I wrote me just as I imagine oh. that I'm bigger than you because I'm... So that's I think me. your dick's little, Ralph. <laughs> oh. How about that, you piece you of... You just thrown the game. Real nice, for we were friends at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just because you thought you bigger than mine. Real nice, Bobby. How big's your... Can we be Jay. friends? I don't get in a fight, but I will <laughs> fight you over this. this absolutely <laughs> hilarious, man. All right, so now let's hear they do. Yeah. yeah. Derek, what did you say? I said, Dave, only because Chloe was broadcasting it when you were sleeping on the couch that one year. She was like, yeah, you got a big old hammer. So I was like, all right, I guess Dave. All right, well, I put me, but here's why. I wanted, it's more because for Because my d- is bigger <laughs> no, than yours. That's it's fine. It's for the ego as a man, you should always say you, so I was going to say me. Oh, so right. if it had been you, you should have said you too, and I would have picked you. This is a bad win. So, uh, <laughs> so my game for saying you? No. I'm just letting you know. I was get, like, in the fucking, weird, you're, in you're the weird scenario, winning. listen. Chloe is a we won. So we won. Broadcasting, and I was like, All right, right. we won, and we got it. But for future reference, if we ever have to do yeah, that yeah, again, yeah, I'll just say, man. <laughs> so I now, got you, bro. I'm erasing it right now. Am I right that we are dead even? They won round two. We won round one. <laughs> yes. So now, Ralph and Jay, you can either dab or take a drink. Okay. But I feel like it should be like a good sized drink. This now. is yeah. uh, a tequila well, right here. I'll do a drink because right. noted. Yeah. You made us. Uh, I don't think I've ever thought of Derek's. In the 17 years I've known him, <laughs> I only thought you assholes. Of what Chloe said, I didn't think of your dick. I thought what Chloe said. Chloe said you had a hammer, so I was like, okay. I went I'll by Dave there. Temple's rules and I said, "My dick, Ralph." <laughs> right. Yeah, with, with some thought, sort of. I ain't getting all hyped up on some other man's. <laughs> but also, you threw in, you threw, in, you threw calculus into your situation for some. Oh, reason. simple square footage, dude. <laughs> calculus. Hey, I'm not gonna lie to you. Because y'all both have wrote me, I was going to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's technically true. <laughs>